I'm Bernina expert Amanda Murphy, and this is how you make twirl. My popular foundation piece pattern available on my website, www.amandamurphydesign.com and independent quilt shops. To begin, make 20 copies of the paper piece template. You'll make 20 wedges that form the circle of twirl, 10 in one color story and 10 in the other. In this video, I'll show you how to make the A units and you make the B units exactly the same. I apply a little bit of fabric glue with my glue stick to the wrong side of the template behind area one. I need to make sure that this fabric completely covers that area and it also extends at least a quarter inch beyond that area into the area that is defined with the number two. So here you can see I have plenty of fabric. Then I use my add a quarter ruler to trim that fabric so that it extends a quarter inch into that second area exactly. So I trim it right here. Now I take my area two fabric, which I've already labeled, and I place it right sides together underneath the area one fabric. And I need to be precise here. I need to make sure that when this seam is sewn, that that area two fabric will completely cover area two and then some. Time to go to the machine. So I've set my stitch length to something really tiny, like 2.0 or 1.8. I really want to perforate the paper as I sew and get a nice tight seam. I start a little before the template's edge and end a little after. And then I take it to my ironing board. This is my Laura Star Smart U ironing system. I love it. I iron the seam flat and then I iron it open. And I make sure if I want to apply steam that I'm over the fabric instead of over the paper. I don't want to buckle the paper. Time to add step three. So first we have to trim step two here. So I fold back my template along the seam between two and three, and then I'll use my add a quarter ruler to trim the fabric. Some people like to pre-fold all the lines when they foundation piece, but I didn't here. So I trim to a quarter inch, and then I get fabric number three, and I put it underneath and I make sure that when I sew and I open up that fabric that I'm going to completely cover area three. So you'll notice I moved that piece up a little bit to ensure that it would completely cover that area. That looks good. And I take it to the sewing machine. So again, I check one more time before I sew. I flip the entire piece over and I'm going to sew that seam between area two and three, starting from off the edge of the template and ending beyond the edge of the template. I like to use my dual feed 97 foot here. There we go. I'm on a Bernina seven series. Now I press the seam flat and I press it open. I be careful not to distort the fabric and you'll notice I applied the steam only when my iron was over the fabric, not over the paper. Take it back to the cutting table. I fold back on the line between area three and four and trim that excess fabric to a quarter inch using the add a quarter ruler. Now, in reality, I do these in sets. So I did all 10 of the same color at one time and then all 10 with the other coloration at the same time. There I go, I have that. And I apply the next fabric. When you start the wedge, you're dealing with fairly small pieces of fabric, but later on you'll see we're dealing with larger pieces of fabric. I did decide here I wanted to use a little glue to secure that fabric down. You don't have to be excessive with the glue. You're just looking to hold the fabric in place until you get the next seam sewn.
Now take it to the ironing board and press it open. So press it flat first and then open. Okay, we're ready to apply the next piece. So this is going to be the piece, piece number five. So I fold back the paper between areas four and five and I trim that fabric. And this next piece is going to be fairly large, so I'm going to want to use uh, glue to temporarily hold things down. Once you get into a rhythm, foundation piecing is actually quite easy. So there we go. So this is a, going to be a piece that covers area five. And these next two pieces can be a little tricky because they're fairly large pieces of fabric. You need to remember to check and make sure that that fabric is going to completely cover its area. So I check once at the cutting table with the large pieces and then oftentimes I'll check again at the sewing machine just to make sure things haven't shifted. I sew from one end to another. Now here, I'm going to sew not to the edge of the template, but to a little beyond that seam intersection. So that's about three eighths of an inch, I guess. Close enough that that seam isn't gonna rip out. Press it open. And then I go back to the cutting table. Now here you can see, I really need to use a little bit of glue from my fabric glue stick to secure the piece and hold it down while I trim it. The procedure's the same, I turn it over, but this time there's a seam that's going to impede my turning it over. So I have to rip it a, a little bit and I hold it down with my finger as I rip the paper away. I want the paper to rip, but I don't want the seam to rip out. And then I fold over that line, dividing the two areas as shown. There we go. And now I trim both pieces of fabric quarter inch away with my quarter inch template. My foundation is growing in size at this point, but I don't do anything differently. I continue to sew as I have the whole time. Next is area six. Before I move on, I'm just gonna trim some of this extra fabric from beyond the template's edge, just to make things a little neater and less cumbersome. So time for fabric number six. Once again, I need to make sure that when I open it, fully covers that area and then some. So I take it to the machine and sew on the line between areas four and five on one side and six on the other side. One of the things that makes twirl an easy pattern is there's just one template for each wedge. It looks like it's so complex, but it isn't really. And the other thing that makes it easy is when you join the wedges, there aren't seams to match. The only thing you have to be careful of is not cutting off your triangle points, but really because of the way the pattern is designed, you don't have to worry too much about the seams. I'm definitely gonna have to use a little glue to hold this fabric in place. So I've really speeded up the video at this point so you guys don't have to sit and watch me sew everything in real time. Okay, time to trim. And once I sew that next seam, that area will be secure so I don't have to worry about over gluing it. So the next seam will be that between number six and number seven. Turn back my fabric, trim, and go to the sewing machine. So at this point, you know the drill. We press the fabric open. We go over to the cutting board, add glue if needed, 
We fold back the paper and we trim the fabric and we apply the next piece. With the magic of video, I'm gonna let you guys watch me piece this super quickly until I get to the end of my wedge. And then I'll be back to explain how I finished twirl. What's nice about ending the piecing is after piece 10, the pieces start getting smaller and smaller, so they go faster, which gives you a real sense of completion. Once you are done piecing the foundation, trim both the paper and the fabric to the edge of the template. You want to trim on the solid line. No need to add an extra seam allowance, it is included. I usually use a rotary cutter with an older blade for this step. Next, You'll piece a little more fabric onto the edge of your wedge using a curved seam and the template for that is included. Pay attention to fabric placement and then you'll piece all your wedges together. You'll applique those wedges onto your pieced backing. 
Applique on the center circle, then cut a slit in the backing and cut away the backing fabric from behind the entire applique and then remove the paper. That's it. That's how you create a twirl quilt. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about foundation paper piecing.